in this video you see this 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 and this we're right now walking to mile end station because this is the closest station from where we sleep uh, here we will take the district line to Whitechapel and we came to Whitechapel because here the underground trains are going over the overground trains and weird stuff here then we continued with the district line to Tower Hill, the exit for the Tower of London. We're gonna walk along the river uh, to do some tourist uh, things like the Tower Bridge, Bank, and St. Paul's Cathedral. After which, we walked over the Millennium Bridge, which has the cables on the side, which is a very weird design. This bridge is for pedestrians only and was opened in 2000. However, after two days, the bridge was closed again because it was shaking a lot. Basically, the frequency of the pedestrian steps, which by the way became synchronized by the vibrations, were equal to the resonance of the bridge, which reinforced each other, or something like that. It's not for nothing that I'm talking about metros and not about quantum mechanics in my videos. I know this isn't quantum mechanics, but... <sighs> and we arrived at Sadak, from where we took a Jubilee Line train to Waterloo. This part of the Jubilee Line is called the Jubilee Line Extension and opened in 1999. Platform screen doors can be found on this Jubilee Line Extension. So no nice shots of the train itself here. On the Jubilee Line runs 1996 stock, which is basically a less advanced variant of the 1995 stock, because these had to be built faster. One effect of this is that the trains make a certain specific sound, which is this. It's that of this. Unfortunately, it was very busy in the train. So now we are at Waterloo. Here we try to find the Waterloo city line. After a long walk through Waterloo station, we found the Waterloo city line. This Waterloo city line is by far the shortest tube line of the network. It runs from Waterloo to Bank and opened in 1898. However, only since 1994 has the line been part of the underground. Before this, the line was served by Network Southeast, a passenger sector of British Rail. Their logo can still be seen on the platforms. On this line runs 1992 stock. And I have to admit that I made a little mistake in the previous video. Not the 1995 stock, but the 1992 stock where the first trains where the doors slide open on the outside. The trains consist of four coaches and are therefore much shorter than the other tube trains. And after 3 minutes and 40 seconds, we got to the other end of the line. And we're back on the new platform of Bank Station, like Please yesterday. Here we take a southbound train. And after leaving Borough Station, we drive through the oldest part of the deep level underground. The next station is Oval. This is the northern... The stretch between Borough and Stockwell opened all the way back in 1890. <laughs> And we arrived at Clapham North with its small island platform in the middle. When the station was built in 1900, an island platform was chosen because it was cheaper to build and because it fit under the road above the station. Building under privately owned buildings costs more money because the building owner must receive compensation. So they tried to stay under the road. Later the trains and the train tunnels became wider and the platforms became as narrow as they are today. Then we took the Northern Line one stop back to Stockwell, where we took the Victoria Line to Queen Park. But for some obscure reason, I don't seem to have filmed there. So we changed on the last minute to Victoria Line, and I, then I thought there are only two more lines, two more deep level lines left. So now we're going to take the Piccadilly Line and the other line. Voice over. How come that you don't know? The Bakerloo Line, of course. I must say I was looking forward to these two lines. The Piccadilly line has 1973 stock and the Bakerloo line hereafter has 1972 stock. So these trains are already 50 years old. The age was certainly noticeable in the acceleration of the trains. They accelerated very slowly and a bit jerky compared to the newer tube stock. But it is also possible that it is because they were very full. Anyway, the trains haven't left yet. 
The hope is that they will be replaced by the end of the decade. But it is quite possible that they haven't disappeared yet from the network by 2032 and that they will reach their 60th birthday. Subscribe if you don't want to miss that video. Here at Oxford Circus we change to the central line that took us all the way back to Mile End. This will change our tube map from this to this. I hope to see you again in the next video and a little hint. Bye.